Hello everyone. Greetings in Jesus' name. You're through to St Mark's Online. And this video uploaded to put available online my address from yesterday evening's Carols by Candlelight on Sunday the 18th of December 2022. One of the songs we sang was this. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Heavenly Father, let light shine from your word into our hearts for Jesus' sake. Amen. Can you make sense of the world? War in Ukraine. What a dominant feature that has been this year. Ten months of destruction and bloodshed. And inflation is back. If 2020 was the year of plans torn up, 2021, the year of plans delayed, then 2022, the year of plans with escalating costs and management and workers not in agreement. Listen to Luke, the Bible writer. Caesar Augustus issued a decree, Luke chapter 2, everyone to return to their hometown. Why? For refreshing tax registers? For potential new regiments of soldiers? For pride in numbers alone? Just to show he was in charge? What disruption it caused by the order of one man? Or consider Herod in Jerusalem, sending the Magi and telling them to report back, quote, so that I too may worship him, that is, this newborn king. Sheer deceit, political manipulation. Has government always been thus? Then the murder of all those infant boys in an attempt to kill Christ. Bloodshed, violence, the slaughter of the innocent, the grief of the families. It's just evil. So what went wrong? Why is the world this way? What reason will you go for? The failure of education? Parents as bad examples? Something genetic? A psychotic mental state? An early traumatic experience? Or just falling in with the run, run, wrong crowd? If I can say the words, wrong crowd? Or, or do we say, simply taking the opportunity before us? The root explanation is basic and profound. It goes back to the Garden of Eden and affects the moral and spiritual DNA of every man. God had spoken the world into being. God had given man charge of the world. God had said it was not good for man to be alone. God had made woman for the man. Then Satan speaks. He was a fallen angel. He approaches the woman. She had not been created when God gave his instructions to the man, so she had only heard the instructions from Adam. The serpent said, did God really say? This is doubting God's word. We were made to trust him, but she didn't. She is defensive. She's caught off guard. She adds a little extra, saying, oh, we mustn't eat of the forbidden fruit or even touch the tree. Well, that's adding to it. That's a failure of loyalty to what God had said. Satan takes his moment and presses the advantage while the woman is off balance. He says to her, you know, it's only because your eyes will be open and you will be like God. How tempting that is. Doubting God's goodness, feeling he's keeping something important and good just to himself but we were made to trust him. 
and yet we reinterpret his ways to suspect that he is a cosmic killjoy, some sort of bully. In fact, having eaten the forbidden fruit, the man and the woman would become like God, in knowing good and evil. But what God understood from divine insight, they would learn by an experience that corrupted them to the core. Satan had told a half-truth. Half-truths often get better traction than pure lies. And then Satan announces to Eve, you will not surely die. Oh, he's got momentum here. This is just a pure lie. This is doubting God's judgment. That's not going to happen. And she and Adam did not die at once. They died spiritually by being expelled from Eden and the presence of God. And then in later chapters, the number of years at their death proclaims their mortality. There it is, fixed in the text, located in history, all part of a devilish strategy, in use to this day. And why not? People fall for it again and again. You're not taking God's word seriously, are you? You don't really believe he's good, do you? <laughs> there is no judgment. Really? It explains it all, you see. Good versus evil, God and the devil. The ultimate superpower confrontation, mankind captive till freed. So the problem of the world is the problem of the human heart. The solution is a birth. God steps into the world. As he had prophesied, the virgin will be with child. This isn't about a military invasion nor the use of vast wealth for influencing appointments or contracts, nor the stirring up of online abuse from anonymous keyboard warriors to cancel free speech. But a child, a gift in weakness, in vulnerability, in humanity, in relationship, in time and in space, the incarnation, we would see God our maker, showing us how to live. Mary was fearful. Gabriel had to say, do not be afraid. Do you misunderstand God's intention? Don't miss the teaching. There is an unconquerable king to rescue and to lead us. And he gathers his people. And they're identified by sharing Mary's response, saying, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. I know there are people who struggle with this and are in negotiation with the Almighty, but this is the standard. This is what identifies the true disciple. Joseph was unbelieving. A good response too. Let's face it, women do not get pregnant without a male seed. But God was the father, and Joseph learnt this in a dream. In Mary's womb, heaven and earth met, and in the life of Christ, Heaven was revealed on earth, and on the cross, heaven's justice was satisfied on earth, atonement for the wrongdoing of mankind. And in the empty tomb, heaven's power was revealed on earth, to reveal an afterlife and foretell a paradise restored. Don't miss the power. It is given for the hard times. The shepherds were thrilled amazed at meeting angels, giving glory to God for including them in his story, praising God for giving the world a saviour. Don't miss the joy and don't let cynicism rob you of potential joy or the prospect of former joy restored. The Magi were on the road. What a journey that was, the trip of a lifetime, word and world in alignment. In Babylon, half a millennium earlier, the Jewish exile Daniel had foretold 77s, and those 490 years were up. Saturn, the king planet, Regulus, the king star, in conjunction. It was a sign nothing else matters. They must see him, 
no matter the inconvenience or objections from those around them. It wasn't for a royal funeral and the opportunity to pass by the coffin on the catafalque in Westminster Hall, not even a coronation at Westminster Abbey, although for Christ his enthronement would be with a crown of thorns lifted up on the cross. For the Magi, the prospect was greeting the arrival of the King of Kings. They had to meet the one in whom hope lives, faith trusts, peace resides, love wins, truth makes sense. They had to get near the unbeatable heart of the unstoppable plans of the everlasting God. Will you make your journey to find him, to worship him, to follow him, to believe him, to learn his ways, to bring gifts to him, to declare that you're so much more than a consumer, but a worshipper on an exciting adventure, called to live for the glory of God, the honour of his name, the praise of his ways, to know him and make him known. So then, what is your Christmas journey? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that scripture is the explanation for life and the teaching for salvation we need. We thank you that in the Christmas story we find the pre fresh start and the new way forward. Thank you that you are the God of intervention, the God of initiative, the God of compassion. Draw us further into your light. Dispel the darkness and cause us to rejoice in your love, in your power, in your care. Lead us on, gracious God, for Christ's sake. Amen. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. God was gracious to us and we had a good crowd for our carols by candlelight. And we pray that his blessing and good hand would continue upon us at St Mark's. And if you are unable to join us for any of our remaining services, God bless you too. And so may the joy of the shepherds and the perseverance of the wise men and above all the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to you this Christmas time and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you love both near and far and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for remaining connected with St Mark's.